Welcome everyone to today's PL Research Seminar. Today is the 19th of April and we have Shreshao Wang uh, presenting. Uh, he is a, a PhD candidate in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Illinois, working with Professor Pramudvi Swanath, and I'm sure I butchered that one as well. Uh, his research interests are in decentralized consensus protocols uh, and blockchains. He applies techniques from applied probability, combinatorics, and optimization to provide new algorithmic solutions and analyze the performance and security of new blockchain protocols. Uh, today, he will be presenting his work on Minotaur, a multi-resource blockchain consensus, which is joint work from people uh, all around the globe at IOHK, the University of Illinois, of course, the University of Seattle, Edinburgh and Athens. And I believe we also have one of his co-authors, Matthias Fitzi, uh, on the call. So thank you both for joining. And uh, again, thank you. Thank you all for attending or watching this recording. And yeah, the floor is yours. Thanks, George, for the introduction. Okay, let's get started. I'm honored to pre present our recent work, Minotaur Multi-Resources Blockchain Consensus, today at the day's PL Research Seminar. Resource-based consensus is the backbone of permissionless blockchains. Participation in such consensus protocol is enabled by proving possession of a certain type of resource. Usually, this is referred as proof of X mechanism in the literature, including proof of work used in Bitcoin and Ethereum, and the proof of space stake used in Cardano and Algorand and also proof of space used in Chia network and the Filecoin. Now, each of these different POX mechanisms have led to different blockchain ecosystems. And it is known that the single resource blockchains are vulnerable to 51% attacks when a person or a group takes control of more than half of all the resource in, in the network. For example, during the months of uh, August 2020, the Ethereum Classic network suffered uh, not one but three 51% uh, attacks in one month. And in the literature, the checkpoint ledger was proposed to address the 51% attack on POW blockchains. It uses a committee to secure a POW ledger by regularly issue, che issuing checkpoints. And usually the committee, checkpointing committee is chosen randomly from the pool of the stakeholders. So the safety of the checkpointing ledger is guaranteed by the safety of the checkpointing protocol. And usually it will be a BFT protocol running by the committee. The checkpointing committee will also provide some kind of checkpoint certificate to the miners. And the, the protocol, the checkpointing ledger will require that the checkpoint certificate must be included in the in the chain to introduce some extra randomness that will restart the, the mining game. So in, in this way, uh, some of the, the, the pre-mined private blocks by the adversary, uh, adversary will become invalid because they did not acknowledge the checkpoint certificate. So therefore, uh, in the checkpoint ledger, there will always be non-zero chain quality, even if the honest miner control less than 50% of the mining power. So this guarantees the liveness of the protocol. Yeah, however, in the checkpoint, checkpoint ledger, the trust is just shifted from POW to POS. The security of the scheme is solely guaranteed by the checkpoint submit committee which is drawn from the pool of the stakeholder, but not by the miners. Uh, and the, the question is that if we have uh, such a trusted checkpointing committee, then why we still need a pure, uh, POW blockchain? We can just let the checkpointing committee to run a permission the BFT protocol, like for example, a hot stuff, and it will achieve, achieve much higher throughput and lower latency. Uh, than the POW blockchain. This leads to a natural question is that, can we achieve a fungible combination of different resources? Okay, wh what, do me, what do I mean by fungible? Okay, I, I mean that the security of the protocol is guaranteed 
as long as the honest players control a majority of the combined resources. Okay, let me introduce some notations. At capital M be the number of resources in the system, and the beta I be the fraction of adversarial power in the ice resources. And omega I is the weight of the ice resource. And we have the sum of the weight omega I is equal to one. Then the, our desired security guarantee can be formulated as in this formula, that is the, the sum of omega I beta I should be less than one half. And we can check that with this security guarantee, the adversary will be unable to launch a successful attack by commanding like just 50, 51% in only one of the underlying resources. Uh, like for example, if beta one is greater than one half, then this inequality may still hold if the other beta highs are, are small. Okay, so in this talk, I will fo first focus on hybrid uh, POW and the POS protocols. And I will use beta W as the fraction of the adversarial, adversarial mining power and the beta S be the fraction of the adversarial stake. And the omega, again, omega will be a weighting parameter between zero and one. And uh, we, we want to achieve security uh, whenever omega times beta W plus one minus omega times beta S is less than one, ha one half. And this is also plotted as the right curve uh, in this figure. And if we change the, the value of omega, uh, the, the slope of the, this curve will be changed, uh, but it will always pass through the center point, half, half. Okay, let, let, let's simplify the problem a, a little bit more. Uh, I will first consider a static setting uh, where the total mining power and the total active stake is fixed and also known to the protocol designer. So in this way, we can have a very simple protocol at the beginning of the protocol, we can tune the mining targets of the POW blocks and the POS blocks such that the miners will mine POW block uh, with rate omega times F. And the stakeholder will generate POS blocks with rate one minus omega F. Here M is just the total mining rate of, the, uh, of all the blocks. For example, it can be like 10 minutes per block, like in Bitcoin. And then uh, in this simple protocol, simple protocol, the POW and the POS mining will just occur in parallel. Uh, whichever, whichever miners or whichever miners or stakeholders uh, succeed first, it just go ahead and uh, extends the longest chain, which accepts both type of blocks. Yeah, compared with a pure proof of stake protocol, for example, Auroros Plus. Uh, the adversary in this simple protocol has strictly smaller action space because it cannot equivocate with the POW blocks. So the security of this simple protocol directly, directly follow the security of uh, POS long chain protocol. However, this is only true in the static setting, uh, but how about the dynamic setting? Particularly, we are interested in the variable mining power case. Before moving on to the variable mining power case, I'd like to point out that a key requirement of practical POW blockchains is to adapt the immense variation in mining power. For example, the mining power of Bitcoin increased exponentially by a, an astonishing factor of 10 to the power of 14 during its decade of deployment. Therefore, we, therefore we have to consider the dynamic setting for our protocol to be practical. Okay, come back to the simple protocol to support variable uh, mining power. We can try an epoch-based mining target adjustment rule, just like in Bitcoin. Uh, for example, as shown in this figure, let capital D be the duration of an epoch and let small n be the number of POW blocks and uh, let small d be the desired POW interblock time. Uh, for, for example, these parameters in Bitcoin are like the capital D is about two weeks and the small n is 2016 blocks per epoch. 
and the uh, inter block time is 10 minutes per, per block. So then we can adjust the mining target of the POW blocks by comparing the duration of the last epoch with the desired duration of an epoch as written in this formula. And also we, we learn from the static setting that to guarantee security for each epoch, the ratio of the total block rates of POW blocks and the POS blocks must be a constant omega by one minus omega. Yeah, but unfortunately, this ratio is controlled by the adversary because the adversary can always decide to hide or release its, private, its POW blocks. And the inaccurate POW mining target adjustment could lead to a, a different weighing, weighing parameter omega than the desired one. And more importantly, the value of omega is, only, is unknown to the honest player because they don't know the mining power of the uh, adversary. So for example, it is possible that we want to achieve a security curve as shown as presented in the right line. But after the difficulty adjustment, the actual omega is presented by the blue line. Then as long as the uh, adversarial power falls in the yellow region, which is below the right curve, but uh, above the blue curve, then the protocol will be, this simple protocol will be insecure. And therefore this simple idea of, of simply uh, mixing POW and the POS blocks does not work in the dynamic setting. Okay, to achieve fungible security in the dynamic setting, uh, we propose Minotone. Uh, at, a, at a high level, the online POS protocol uh, can be black boxed. Uh, the Minotone can be built on a epoch-based POS longer chain protocol. For, for example, we can use the Ouroboros series of uh, protocols or Snow White. An important notation in Minotone is that we define the notion of virtual stake as a combination of the actual stake and the work stake. So the actual stake is contributed by the tokens in the system, and the work stake is contributed by the POW mining. Uh, I will explain this in detail later. And uh, in Minotaur, the main chain blocks are scheduled by means of the virtual stake instead of using the actual stake distribution like in the POS protocol. Okay, before moving to the details of Minotaur, I will first give a brief description of the POS uh, long chain protocols. Uh, take Ouroboros Prowse as an example. Uh, in Ouroboros Prowse, the time is divided into fixed length epochs. And in each epoch, we, we will have a randomness uh, that will be used to do the POS lottery. We will use this randomness to select a group of uh, block proposals in the epoch one from the pool of the stakeholder. And then in the first epoch, the, the randomness R0 zero is just hard-coded in the Genesis block. Then at the beginning of the second epoch, we will calculate a new random, randomness R1, which is a function of the block hash in epoch zero. Then again, we will use this new randomness to draw another group of block proposers from the stakeholders, and they will produce blocks for the epoch two. And this process repeats for other epochs. Okay, following the underlying POS protocol, Minotaur also has fixed the time epochs. And the POS blocks in Minotaur are main chain blocks, but they are scheduled by means of the virtual stake. And the POW blocks, they are not on the main chain, but they are referred or picked by the POS blocks. And this is similar to the fruit chain structure. The POW blocks in Minotaur are fruits hung on the main chain. Okay, next I will explain how to calculate the the virtual stake. In each epoch, the total virtual stake will always be the sum of the total actual stake and the sum of the total work stake. And remember that the total actual stake is just a total uh, token supply supply in the in the network. And then and we and for each epoch, we set the total work stake as W 
such that omega times the total uh, actual state is the same as one minus omega times the total work state. So in each epoch, the ratio of the total uh, actual state and, and the total work state is a constant. And then the work stakes will be distributed to the miners according to, according to their contribution in the past epochs. And the work stake distribution in epoch E uh, is the same as the distribution of POW blocks mined in epoch E minus two. And note that we have a one epoch gap here because the work stake should be determined prior to the randomness used for POS lottery. Now remember that in Ouroboros browse or, or other Ouroboros pro protocol, the new randomness for this new epoch is draw as it's calculated as a function of the block hash in last epoch. So the randomness is drawn from somewhere here, but the work stake distribution is drawn from the epoch E minus two. Uh, otherwise, if we don't have this one epoch gap, then the miners can and grant on the public keys to send the work stake to their favorite keys. And this is very similar to the stake granting attack in POS. Yeah, and the Minotaur can, can easily support variable mining power. We can use a difficulty, mining difficulty adjustment rule similar to Bitcoin. Like for example, we can compare the actual number of POW blocks mined in one epoch with the expected number. And just to point out that this is not that critical to the security of Minotaur, uh, but we still want to keep the POW block rate reasonable. Uh, for example, if the POW block rate is too, too large, then it may exceed the network capacity. And on the other hand, if the block rate is too small, then we will have a very high variance in the work stake alignment. Uh, just mean, this means that we can no longer assign the work stake uh, fairly to the miners. This figure shows the security region of Minotaur together with uh, a few other hybrid POW POS protocols. And the Minotaur with omega equal to one half is presented as the right line. And in the paper, we also prove that Minotaur achieves the optimal security. By optimal, we mean that the, this region bounded by the right curve can no longer be enlarged anymore. And uh, earlier, we also mentioned the protocol called Checkpoint and Ledger. Uh, it is secure as long as you have an honest majority in the total stake. So uh, the security region is bounded by this right line, this horizontal line. And actually, uh, the Checkpoint and Ledger also has optimal security but it is not fungible in the sense that there is in the sense that there is no trade-off between the, the trust in the stake and the trust in the work. And in the literature, there is also a, a hybrid protocol called two hop blockchain, which is, which is presented as the right line here. And the, the two hop blockchain claims to be secure on the majority of the adversarial mining power. So it can also uh, survive the 51% 50, 50, mining attack. However, their security proof still requires an honest majority in the stake. So the security region, region of the two hop blockchain is not optimal. And also in the literature, there are many other hybrid protocols uh, cate categorized as the finality gadgets. Uh, Will they try to build a finality layer on the top of a POW blockchain and they try to bring some actual properties such as finality and uh, accountability to the POW blockchain. And usually in these protocols, they will need an honest majority or even honest supermajority in both the stake and the work. Okay, now let me provide a, a, a proof sketch of minus on security. And note that there's no work stake defined in the first two epoch. So in the first two epoch, we will use the initial stake as the virtual stake. So we will need an also majority assumption in the initial stake distribution and uh, apply the Ouroboros security argument. 
then we will have security of the main chain in the first two epochs. And then uh, follow the follow a through chain argument that we can have a fairness of the pure dark rocks in epochs one and two. Here fairness, we mean that uh, 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 the miner with like alpha fraction of mining power will contribute to alpha fraction of POW blocks. And note that here we cannot directly use the fairness argument proved in the original food chain protocol, as there the, they assumed a static setting and also an honest majority in the total mining power. But here in our paper, we managed to prove it in the dynamic setting and also when the when there is no honest majority in mining power, the fairness guarantee combined with our major assumption that uh, omega times beta w plus one minus omega beta s is less than one half, we can have honest majority in the virtual stake in epochs three and four. Then again, apply overall security argument that, that we can have the security of the main chain in epochs three and four. And the analysis goes on, and we can prove security for Minotaur for all the time. But in, in Minotaur, the weighing parameter omega can actually can also be changed over time. For example, omega can omega e. We can have omega e in omega e in the east epoch. Um, for example, if we want to change omega e from one half to two fifths at the beginning of uh, epoch e zero plus one, then Okay, remember that we have a one epoch gap when updating the work stake. So we will need the adversarial, adversarial uh, power to be bounded by the right line uh, before and in epoch E0 minus one. And uh, similarly, we will need the adversarial uh, power to be bounded by the blue line in, in and after epoch E0 minus one. <coughs> And especially during the epoch E0 minus one, the adversarial power needs to be bounded by both of the lines. But as long as the omega E0 plus one does not differ too much from the omega E0, so this restriction on the adversary, adversary is still reasonable. Yeah, we remarked that the function omega E may be decided by the protocol designer. So it can be hard coded in the Genesis block but the players can also reach an agreement off-chain to update the value of Omega by doing a soft fork. Okay, we point out that such flexible weighing between the work and the stake is very useful in practice. So it's known that the POS blockchains are very easy to launch. For example, we can use many ex existing techniques such as proof of burn, uh, initial coin offering, and L drop. In contrast, the bootstrapping of a POW blockchain is challenging, as the new system would start off a relatively small uh, total mining power and thus be vulnerable to the 51% attacks. So the mining tower can be launched as a pure proof of stake product, uh, blockchain and then later transit into a pure proof of work blockchain by changing Omega from zero to one gradually. Yeah, I have presented Marathon as a hybrid uh, POW and POS protocol so far, but it can also be generalized to, to multiple resources. Let M be the number of different resources. Then we can have POW, then the POW blocks in the Marathon can be replaced by different types of resource blocks. And we can distribute omega i fraction of the virtual state according to the distribution of the ice type of resource blocks. And again, the sum of the omega i is equal to one. This is similar, how we similar to how we distribute the work stake in the, in the hybrid POW, POS version of Manitou. And uh, also the actual stake is not required to be one of the M resources because we can just assign zero weight to the actual stake. Then the multi resources monitor will be secure as long as the sum of omega i, beta i is less than one half. And this is also all visualized uh, in the picture on the right. And as an application, the multi resource monitor can be used to combine different types of works. 
for example, the first resource in Minotaur can be can be work using SHA-256, which is the hash function used in Bitcoin. And the second resource can be work using uh, ETH, which is the hash function used in Ethereum. And the third resource can be the actual stake in the system. And again, this can be possibly assigned with zero weight. So we will have a pure proof of work protocol. And in this way, we can have more robust POW blockchains. For example, we can assign higher weight to the more decentralized work. And in this case, it will be work with using it hash. And or we can or we can assign higher weight to the more costly work. So in this way, it will make it more expensive to attack the protocol. Okay, to demonstrate the stability of Minotaur, we also implemented a full stack prototype client in 6,000. And we also implemented several active attacks on our prototype. Yeah, the, the first attack is the self mining attack, where a self miner withhold its mine blocks and release them later at the appropriate time to take the place of to take the place of an honest blocks in the longest chain. And from this table, we report the chain quality or the fraction of honest POW blocks uh, of three different protocols, Bitcoin, Fluidchain, and Minotaur. And from the table, we can see that Bitcoin is indeed vulnerable to the self mining attack, meaning that the attacker has more fraction of POW blocks in the main chain and that's more block rewards in Bitcoin than its fraction of mining power particularly when beta W is larger than one half. And the fruition only resist the self mining attack when beta W is less than one half. And meanwhile, in Marathon, the attacker can only have beta W fraction of the total POW blocks, no matter how much mining power it has, like even when, the, even when beta W is greater than one half. So this fairness guarantee is a key property in Minotaur. It shows that we can distribute the work stake fairly uh, among the miners. Okay, the, the second attack is the private chain attack. Well, an attacker tries to privately generate an alternate chain faster than the public honest chain to displace a confirmed block. And this heat map reports the longest fork that the attacker can maintain during the attack in three different protocols, Minotaur, Bitcoin, and the Ouroboros Plus. And we observe, we observe that as long as beta W plus beta S is less than one, the attacker can only succeed with very short private chain. And even when either beta S or beta W is close to one, and while Ouroboros Plus and uh, Bitcoin will need a beta S less than one half and a beta W less than one half respectively. And, and also this is, on, this is uh, the known result from their security uh, analysis. Also, so this result is also in line with our security proof of Minotaur. Okay, as a summary, uh, today I present the Minotaur as a multi-resource blockchain protocol. So it, it, it is a black box construction, construction on the top of a POS long chain protocol. And uh, Minotaur continuously samples the active resource power to provide a fair exchange between the stake and the non-stake resources, for example, the work or space. And uh, Minotaur also has provable and provable and fungible security. And also we have a prototype imp implemented in Rust. But I think that concludes my presentation today. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you again for, for presenting and, and thank you for, for attending. Uh, this is part of a, of a, a broader uh, series of, of talks that Protocol Web organizes for the benefit of the community. The recordings are on YouTube and uh, you and we do publish uh, a schedule of future talks uh, on our GitHub repository. Also, you may want to join our, uh, to go to our website and register for our mailing list if you want to receive notice of upcoming talks. So again, thank you so much to, to our speakers. Thank you for, uh, thank you to all of those watching and we'll see you again next time.